Hey guys, what's up? It's Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews here with a Halloween special for you. And when I say Halloween special, I mean I'm just gonna review a horror movie. Um, and and yeah, that's it. Uh, today we got Ace's Craft Pumpkin Cider, and we're drinking it out of the bottle today. Or tonight, either way. So the movie I'm gonna be talking about is a horror comedy from director. Richard Phillips Jr. or Richard Bates Jr. Where am I getting Phillips? This guy directed a little movie um, quite a few years ago called Excision, which was based on a short film he did in college. Um, Excision is, uh, in my opinion, one of the best horror comedies of the last probably 20 years. It's legitimately very funny and disgusting and disturbing and it's kind of a weird character study on a quirky girl who is obsessed with death um, and who wants to be a surgeon. His follow-up was a film called, uh, what was, what was this follow-up called? Um, Suburban Gothic, which was an alright horror comedy. I wasn't the biggest fan, well I'm not the biggest fan. Um, but it has some good moments in it, and it's got a decent cast. It's definitely more lighthearted than his first film. Uh, after that, he did the film Trash Fire. Keep in mind, I reviewed all these movies on my channel, because uh, I said I would review every single one of his movies as they came out. And Trash Fire is a good return to form for Richard. It's uh, a dark comedy, and uh, very similar to the dark comedy in uh, this film I'm going to be talking about, as well as his first film, Excision. The humor comes from the delivery and kind of how it's written. Like, you can't just explain, you know, the dialogue of the scene or the scene itself to somebody and expect them to think it's funny because most people would say that's kind of gross, that's morbid. But the way it is shot and edited and acted and, you know, sp and, and, and um, spoke, I guess spoken would be the word, um, really affects it. And uh, g gives it, it gives it kind of a quality all its own. It, it almost a almost a surreal, absurd way. Uh, but yeah, Trash Fire was 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 good return to form. Not with the gross humor, but definitely on the dark humor. Like, man, if you explain what happens in that movie out of the context of the movie, um, or you just explain what happens in it at all without showing somebody how the film kind of handles it. They would assume this is a this is the disturbing movie, which, um, to be fair, Trash Fire kind of is. Um, so now we have Tone Death, um, which stars Robert Patrick, who was the liquid metal uh, T-1000 Terminator in Terminator 2, which is one of the best movies ever made, inarguably. It's impossible to argue that it isn't. Um, this film also features some of his regulars who appeared in some of his early works, including Annalyn McCord, who was in Excision and Trash Fire. Um, Ray Wise, who I'm pretty sure was in Excision, and I think he had a part, he had a cameo in Trash Fire, or not Trash Fire, but um, uh, Suburban Gothic, and he has a role here. And uh, Ray Santiago, who was, um, I can't remember that fucking guy's name from uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead, and I'm actually kind of mad about that. Um, I'm sitting here in silence because I'm trying to remember, but I can't remember. One of Ash's sidekicks from Ash vs. Evil Dead, um... I can't remember his character's name for the life of me at the moment, so I'm just going to fucking skip it. Uh, but this movie has to do with this young woman uh, spending a weekend in the countryside uh, after losing her job and her boyfriend breaking up with her. Um, and she happens to rent a house uh, f from a man who is who has uh, some psychopathic tendencies and... Um, is struggling to hide them, especially with new company, uh, with, with new people around. So, this film quite literally opens up with Ray Wise committing suicide by hanging himself with eerie, kind of off 
tune, um, tone deaf piano music playing. Um, and that's basically the backstory for the main character is that her parents never came to her piano recitals, and one of those nights they never showed up. Uh, her, her father killed himself, and her father was is portrayed by Ray Wise. And that's a hell of a start to uh, the movie. And then you have, like, the her breaking up with her boyfriend, and that scene is just played in this, like... Uh, it, 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 the way it's performed and written is just so perfectly comedic. But at the same time, it's... It, it's kind of depressing and and how um okay everybody is with what is going on in the situation oh fuck i am fucking christ um like i said before the the com the comedic elements in this movie are very quick they're quippy they can be sometimes absurd and surreal um but often come pretty quick and are pretty dark when taken out of context uh this film also features the return of surreal dream sequences, which was a staple of uh, is a staple of this guy's work at this point. But they were mainly featured in Excision and Trash Fire. Excision, it was a big part of the story. Trash Fire, it wasn't too big of a part of the story. Um, in this film, it's not that big of a deal, um, but it's still uh, really cool sequences. Um, kind of diving into the, the, the mental state of um, the character of Harvey. Speaking of, uh, you know, characters, um, Robert Patrick is great in this movie. He does a really great job of being intimidating and creepy as Harvey. Uh, the main actress, I think it was um, Amanda Crew, she uh, stars as Olive, and she is this, you know, kind of understandable, relatable character that's just... Like, she just wants, you know, um, things to be better for herself. And especially at this point in her life when everything seems to be falling apart around her. The atmosphere and pacing in this movie are very good. It's legitimately pretty funny at times. It's pretty creepy at times. It's never creepy and funny at the same time, which is kind of a problem you get with horror comedies in general. But there are a few films that can do it well. The Lighthouse being a very good example. Um, oh. I would also like to say that um, a lot of the complaints I've heard about this movie is that it itself is a tone-deaf film, and I personally don't think it's that tone-deaf. I think it's, I think even when it does kind of lose track of itself, it's, it's, it's for a purpose, it's for a comedic or uh, creepy purpose, um, for instance, there are there are segments of the film which these are some of my least favorite segments of the film because they kind of, you know, break the atmosphere and immersion a bit. Where the character of Harvey will look directly into the camera, and he will uh, start complaining about young people and millennials and you know all this other shit. And you know, politics aside, it's it's a pretty fucking funny. Um, I assume it was put in the film for comedy, but. I can't be too sure of that, uh, because during these scenes, it's, like, shot in this regular, in, in this kind of creepy, like, almost con consistently zooming in way, um, you know, as if, as if Robert Patrick is getting closer to you as he's saying these things, and, and I assume it's supposed to come off as creepy, but it, it comes off as more hilarious than anything else, and, and that kind of sucks, but it's something that is still funny, and considering this is a horror comedy, it works fine. Uh, but yeah, the big complaint is like, tone deaf is a tone deaf movie, ha ha ha. But I almost want to assume that's intentional with the title, um, and, and the fact that, you know, the, the main character is pretty much tone deaf, and she plays the piano, and, you know, everybody tells her she's good, and she's like, oh yeah, I'm good at it, when really, they're just lying to her to spare her feelings. Uh, yeah, this movie's well made, which is something that is, like, pretty much consistent with Richard Bates Jr. Uh, with his films. They're almost always consistently well made um, and well produced. You know, they're never really that cheap feeling. The dream sequences are very, very cool looking and, uh, you know, the dream sequences themselves are, are pretty much works of art in their own way. 
Um, uh, I'd also like to say that according to the director, this film has to do, uh, it is kind of like a social commentary on how, on, on boomers complaining that younger, younger generations, millennials, Gen Z, etc., etc., um, are self-obsessed and self-aggrandizing and they take, you know, mental health days, you know, they treat themselves, saying that those things are unnecessary while simultaneously doing those exact things and obsessing with themselves and their place in the world, which they often see as a higher place than everybody else, um, and this leading to their own unraveling, their own downfall. And I can see that, that that aspect of the film, it's not a perfect aspect, but I can definitely see and understand where that kind of message could come in. Uh, overall, I, I really, really do like this film. It's very enjoyable, it's very funny, uh, decently violent, you know, there's some, there's a decent amount of gore on the gore meter, it's from 1 to 10, one makes something like, not, something like Nosferatu, 10 makes something like Peter Jackson's Brain Dead. This one's probably like a 3 or 4, like it's got some gore, it's got some blood, but it's, it's not too crazy, um, and, and I don't think, uh, you know, it's gonna have anybody reaching for vomit bags, but, but you never know. Um, but yeah, this movie's good, despite it being a little, a little messy, uh, at times, and there being some problems with it. I personally really enjoyed it, and, uh, I, w I would definitely say this is another, another good one for, um, Richard Bates. He's doing really good for himself. This is like, you know, four out of four movies that I would say that are, uh, good or, you know, enjoyable. Um, the only movie from him I would say is, is bad out of everything so far is, uh, Suburban Gothic, because, Jesus, that movie just, just doesn't feel like it was made by him. But, I'm rambling. Um, I'm gonna give this movie, like, a 7 out of 10, maybe an 8, I don't know right now, but it's definitely going on my best of the year list for this year, so expect to see that as part of it. Anyway, guys, that's it for this one. Have a happy Halloween. This is Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews, signing off. Peace.